Hey everyone, I'm your average guide Sahil Gogna and welcome back to another video. So I was getting a lot of questions around web dev industry that how you should choose a course and even if you're a master student, how you should prepare for the jobs. So in this video, we are going to look into details of this. So without any delay, let's get started. Love, hi Kritika. First of all, thanks a lot for sparing your time and joining the call today. So guys, first thing I should tell you about Kritika and Pranav is that they are the YouTubers and they prepare a lot of content around the web dev industry. So I think they are the perfect people to ask the questions. So guys, before we start our conversation, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah, sure. As you can see the name, uh, the immigrant programmers. So the reason why we kept this name was because it tells about us, about who we are and what is our profession. So we thought it will, it will basically tell a story without saying a lot of words. So that's why we are the immigrant programmers. That's awesome. And guys, the web dev courses are very popular among the college students and even the agents and even the colleges, they are selling the web dev courses like anything. So what according to you makes a complete web dev course? What a student should look into the course before enrolling into it? Well, it, it, it depends. First of all, uh, there are different kinds of web developers. There are, there are people who are great with WordPress, who are great with UI UX. So it totally depends on, on what you like. It, uh, and that is a big point because if you are not creative, you probably don't want to be in UI UX field. And then after that, there's front end, back end, full stack. However, if you are going to do any kind of web dev course, I would say HTML, CSS, JavaScript are the the most essential ones. They are the fundamental the foundation exactly. of any web dev course. Exactly the foundation, and after that, you know, you you should know. I mean, all the companies today will expect you to know any kind of framework, whether it can be in the front end or the back end. Languages really don't matter. One framework or the other, whatever you want to choose, it really doesn't matter. The fundamentals should be clear. So as long as you can create a website after doing a course, that's a good course. That that's it. And I would just like to add a small thing. So like uh, to make a complete web dev course, we should have like a, one framework in the front end, one framework in the back end, mm -hmm. one database, one like complete knowledge about one database, be it SQL, no SQL, whatever. Okay. And also if a student is enrolled into a master's program, so I get a lot of questions around this that they want to join the web dev industry after their master's and they have like few months of spare time before joining the master's program. So what according to you they should spend their time on? Uh, the best time they could spend on is uh, either Udemy or YouTube. Like to be, to be really honest, both of us, uh, we did our bachelor's in India, we did our master's in Canada, but really degrees uh, don't teach you web dev or I mean, they, they will they will teach you the fundamentals of any programming language, but I don't think web dev was really involved. They really scratched the surface with different concepts. Yeah. So because our masters and our bachelors was in computer science. So we did like, we touch up a lot of different concepts, core concepts of computer yeah. science, like AI, ML and stuff, but it wasn't like too much focused on web dev. Mm -hmm. So that was something that we had to learn on our own by doing courses like on YouTube or Udemy or, or like uh, these learning platforms. Yeah, exactly. Like you can obviously watch our videos, but but they're great creators. They are uh, like Andre Nagoy, uh, Max Millen. Max Millen. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah. there are many other YouTubers and Udemy courses. And by the price of a lunch, you can basically learn something that would help you. In. And if we talk specifically about the master's program, so is there somehow any intersection between the web dev industry and the master's program? and what exactly a student who is, you know, targeting the web dev industry should really focus on the master's? Do, should they focus on the online courses and whatever you are talking about? Or they should also focus on the things that are being taught in master's? So like, are the things that are taught in master's, they are relevant to the web dev industry? That's what I want to ask. That's, that's a good question. I mean, uh, because th that is a question we had as well when we were doing our master's that, is this enough or should we look outside and learn some things ourselves? But the answer would be that it's not that straightforward. The stuff they teach you in masters is not like directly related to the web dev industry. Yeah. That's what I would say. They teach you coding, they teach you like programming and other necessary skills that would lay out, lay out a foundation that you mm -hmm. would require to build your web development skills because ultimately it all boils down to writing a piece of code. Exactly. So, and and I think that 
universities or master's program should not teach web dev because web dev is just i would say a part of the computer science industry if there are people who are interested into ai ml it would be uh, you know we are taking away from them uh, if we just just teach one fundamental thing if you just teach web dev there are people who want to learn c who want to use microcontrollers like there there's so many things uh, as you might know already so uh, teaching any one uh, domain is not really uh, something they really would do helpful. in masters and plus if someone wants to just focus on the web development part of computer science as pranav mentioned it's just like a part it it comes under the umbrella of computer science but it's just a part it's that doesn't represent the entire field of yeah. computer science so if you want to focus on web development specifically i'd rather you go for uh specialization courses that many colleges and many university offers mm -hmm. so that would teach you just web development like in and out i was about to ask you this question that a person if he or she wants to join the web dev industry should they go for a masters program or should they join the college uh, college courses so you already gave the answer but if we talk about the job context of the web dev dev industry so does it really make a difference that uh, you are graduated from a university and under a masters program or you are graduated from a college under a diploma it, it doesn't like to to be honest i don't i don't think it does and I, and i'll tell you why like we were discussing about this uh, a while ago that we got our first you know part time jobs in web dev industry uh, by going to meetups so i i used to go to meetups and the the main reason i used to go there is because i i used to learn something new and there was free food so that's the main reason i used to go to meet up there was always pizza there was beer and there were there were people who were of my industry so every time i went to a meet up i met at least 15 different recruiters every time i went there i i met about 50 people who are in my industry already working and if you just stand out if you just do anything that is outside your course curriculum i think you will already stand out so um, and, and who do you think will a company prefer if you if a an employer or a or a person who is already working in the industry has seen you in 10 different meetup events because the people who like to go they go to usually different events multiple times so they you would already make connections and those are much valuable than uh, you know than having a degree in the end and also since you mentioned pranav you have mentioned the part time jobs that you did a did your first part time job a technical one so my next question is related to the part time jobs that how is industry for the part time jobs and how is the industry for the freshers so part time jobs i mean they're very open and very uh, there's a lot of opportunities that are available in the market yeah. and i know i can tell you like for a fact that most of my friends during my and um, friends and acquaintances as well during my master's degree they all did part time jobs and most of them did it in their field so like in computer science or like yeah. web dev and stuff so it's not that difficult to find a part time job mm. but sometimes sometimes the thing is that when you just start out you 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 have no experience no industry experience and stuff so you need to learn some okay. stuff mm -hmm. and sometimes the uh, people tend to do unpaid jobs or like unpaid internships so um that helps a lot that goes on to your resume that also so like you they're unpaid i know and for international students it's <laughs> money is something that's not in abundance when you come for your masters like to a country mm -hmm. like i don't know like overseas and stuff so i know some people don't prefer doing that i mean i was one of them i just hated the idea of unpaid internships but i've seen like my friends who who devoted time to unpaid internships they bag like good full time jobs because of the experience that was on their cv and the things yeah. that they learned in but, that but but just to uh, just to just for the folks who are actually in universities or colleges right now who are struggling to find a job well just let me tell you that it is more difficult to find a technical job than it is to find a job at mcdonalds or you know a call center so obviously you'll have to work a little harder yeah. you'll have to accept a lot of rejections uh, i uh, it, it took me about 10 or 11 months to find a part time job and when i was not finding a job that was the day i finally found it so uh, as i said when i was applying to companies i never heard back or was rejected in one round or the other but when i went to a meet up and a potential employer met me the third time over there they they said they just said uh well would you like to give an interview i said sure at that time i had no experience with web dev 
So, and the job was AngularJS, Node.js, and Mongo. So he asked me, do you know any of these? I said, no, I have only worked with Java before this. And that too in internships, I have never worked professionally in web dev, but he was willing to give me a chance because he saw that I was going to those meetups and you know, for, for no good reason, for just learning and you know, uh, connecting to other people. And also guys, I get one more question, like, like it's a very frequently asked question, that's a, it's about the salary. So you have done the part-time job also and right now you're doing full-time jobs, right? So what according to you can be an average part-time salary or the full-time salary for a person who is working in web dev industry? Well, it depends on a lot of factors. First of all, it depends on the province that you are in. Yeah. So same. like the province okay. slash state <laughs> for US and other countries. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it really depends on the cost of living that that state has. So like salaries are basically dependent on the cost of living. So yeah, that could be one factor. And the other factor is your negotiation skills. I mean, <laughs> how good you are at negotiating the salary. Mm -hmm. But to quote a number, I, I, I would say for, for Montreal, at least for, uh, from what we experienced by ourselves and our friends, it was the part time was I, I'll tell the early number. So the yeah. part time was from anywhere from eight, $18 to about $30. Yeah. <laughs> some people are making more than that. Some people are making less than that. But I would say the average is 18 to 30. And for full time, uh, because full time is usually for the whole year, I would say for web dev, we have seen really different ranges, even in a city. So even in Montreal, the range is from $40,000 to 150. So again, as Kritika mentioned, great points. It depends on your skill. It depends on your negotiation power. But uh, I, I would say the average for full time would be around 70. Six, 60 to 70. Yeah, 70, 60 to 70K. Well, I guess that's it for today's talk, guys. Thanks a lot for sparing our time and sharing your valuable experience with the viewers. Thanks, guys. So guys, this was the today's video about the Canadian web dev industry. So if you like the video, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe the channel. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.